Ugh. Oh, my hernia. Ugh. Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you what's in this box. It is a rigid planer, 13 inch model. Um, I actually bought it six or seven months ago. I've had it for a while and I've never actually opened it up because I've been too busy with other things um, to, to need a planer and it's just been kind of gathering dust in the side of the shop. So I'm gonna open it up today and take you along with me as I figure out what's in the box, get it set up and use it for the first time. There's lots of other videos about this planer on YouTube. Um, this is by no means original. Uh, but one of the things a lot of people recommend is getting extra blades, and I did find some in the store, so I grabbed some extras and threw them in the top of the box. So I'll have those. Those don't actually come with it. Well, owner's manual. Uh, looks like a lockout switch. Warranty card. All right, well, rather than forcing you to slog through opening up the box and pulling everything out, there's lots of other videos you can go watch that show that for this planer. I thought I'd instead focus on the problems that I ran into setting this one up. There were a couple of small issues and there are some things to watch out for. So I'm gonna skip through this little part here and we'll get right into kind of the, some of the issues that I ran into. Um, but before I get into that, I did wanna talk a little bit about the specifics of why I bought this planer instead of some of the other models that are real similar to it. All right, so one of the reasons I went with this planer instead of some of the others that I could have picked up was because of this exhaust port here. It has a little adapter that looks like fits on pretty snugly, about like that, with a screw to lock it in place. And this is going to let me hook it up to uh, a shop vac, which is what I use for my dust collection, and be able to capture all the chips that come off so that it's not just filling my shop with sawdust. Now, of course, the unfortunate part is I don't have exactly the right size adapter. This is pretty close but it's a little bit of a loose fit. So I might wrap some tape around the outside of this just to make it a little snug, uh, but we'll, we'll give it a try and see what we can do. So some of the reviews that I watched on this particular planer indicated that right out of the factory, it comes with some screws a little bit loose, some things maybe possibly misaligned. So it's a good idea to go through the entire thing and make sure that everything's tight and aligned and set up properly. I'm gonna start by checking the in-feed and out-feed tables to make sure that they are flat and perfectly lined up with the planing surface. So you can see this gap that gets bigger and bigger here with my level. This out-feed table is uh, currently adjusted to be too much of a downhill slope. I want it to be as close to perfectly even with the table that's under the cutting blades as much as possible. So to adjust this, you lift this out of the way and there's these little bolts down here that are used to adjust where this thing stops. And so I'm gonna just loosen this a few turns to see how that affects it. Need to loosen the nut at the bottom first. We'll go about that far. And you have to do one side of the table at a time. So I'm gonna leave the other side alone and we'll just recheck this side now. That is better, but it's got a little ways to go still. So we'll go up about a half turn. And now I am gonna go ahead and tighten down this nut, which locks that into place. That looks really good now. So then I did the other side of the outfeed table, and uh, then once that was nice and level, I turned my attention to the infeed table. So I'm checking the alignment on the infeed, and you can see over on the one side, over here, it looks like it's a pretty good alignment. But the farther over to the right you go, the more off it gets, to the point that that's a good quarter inch, almost three eighths of an inch, of differential between the infeed and the cutting surface. And if you look closely, you can see why. Right here at the right edge of the cutting surface, you can see there's a little tab. And that little tab is supposed to be down in that little slot, but it's sitting up on top. So this was assembled incorrectly at the factory, and I'm gonna need to uh, fix that. It was pretty easy to rectify. I just had to pull out a couple of screws, move that thing over, and pop that little tab into the slot where it belongs. Okay, now that that's been corrected, you can see the infeed is properly aligned.
Okay, so now that I've corrected the misalignment between the infeed and the cutting surface uh, table, I can use the same process that I used on the outfeed to level up the infeed table to make sure that it uh, is perfectly in line with the cutting surface. Okay, those are lined up nicely now. Let's check and make sure the blades are tight. You know, the blade surfaces look nice. No chips or dings. And they do appear to be installed nice and straight. One of the problems I've heard about from other users of this is that the blades come loose. That they're not properly tightened. So I'm just gonna double check the tightness. Okay, that all looks pretty good in there. I'll put the cover back on. And I think we're ready to test it. So a friend of mine gave me some of this rough cut pine and I think I'm gonna try and make him a little something out of it to say thank you, he gave me a whole bunch. So we're gonna start by planing down this little piece and uh, just see how it does. So you'll see my dust collection hose keeps coming out and causing me a little bit of grief. And uh, I am going to have to make some adjustments to that. And I'll talk about that here in just a minute. But first I wanted to talk a little bit about the usability of this planer. It's, it's quite easy to use. The controls are well placed. Uh, it's not as loud as I was expecting, which was nice. And uh, it does a nice job feeding the, the board through and making nice deep cuts if I wanted to. So it's doing a good job cutting, but my dust collection pipe, since it doesn't quite fit, it keeps pulling out. So I'm adding a couple of layers of electrical tape around the perimeter here, which should help it fit nice and snug. There we go. So now I had the dust collection hose jammed in there nice and snug, and I thought we would be smooth sailing from here on out, but I found pretty quickly that there was even more sawdust being spit out the front than, uh, than before. And I couldn't figure out what exactly was going on. I thought maybe the vacuum was full, but it wasn't. So after a little bit more investigating, I discovered that actually it had just gotten completely clogged, where it reduces down from the, the two or two and a half inch port down to the one and a half inch hose that I've got here. It was just getting completely clogged up. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of an upgrade to my dust collection, and I've already planned that project. If you haven't subscribed already and you're interested to see what kind of a do-it-yourself dust collector I come up with, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So anyway, once I got that cleared out, as long as I made fairly light passes, I didn't have any more problems with it getting clogged. All right, well, there you go. That's the setup, kind of tuning in and calibrating and uh, first chips on my new planer. I have a little confession. I've never owned my own planer before. I've used some in the past, but I uh, never had one. I'm really excited to have this one in the shop now as I've got some, uh, some great ideas for new projects that are gonna be coming your way pretty soon. So thanks for checking out this video with me. I uh, hope you've learned a little something. If you pick up this particular model of planer, you will wanna make sure you double check everything before you uh, put anything through it because as others have said and as I found for myself, there are gonna be some things that are not assembled quite right or tightened correctly or in line. All right, well, that's gonna about do it for this one. If you liked what you saw, if you learned a little something, I'd appreciate a quick little thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, then go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. But you know, no pressure, whatever. And uh, I guess that's about all there is to say other than thank you very much for watching.